Hi, my name is Wen Yuzhao. Here I will present our work on deconstructing the garbage first garbage collector. This is not a typical system talk where a new system is presented. Rather, it is a historical reflection and engineering breakdown of an important but not well understood algorithm. The garbage first collector, which is widely known as G1, was first described in a 2004 paper and today is one of the most widely used production garbage collectors. Three other garbage collectors sit alongside G1 as important widely used collectors for Java. Today they have dominated the Java world for a decade. Despite important differences, these collectors' design share a common intellectual framework. Much of this talk and our paper is focused on identifying that framework and understanding the trade-offs it manifests. Understanding their common ground helps sharpen our understanding of their differences. Until now, these collectors have tended to be presented as independent monoliths and uh, have not been described in terms of unique contributions they each make against an uh, underlying common design framework. So to do this, we firstly identified an intellectual framework shared by these collectors, and we defined a series of incrementally more sophisticated collectors that retroactively motivate G1. Then we created a first principles implementation of G1 and each of the simpler collectors we defined. Last, we empirically evaluated various design elements of G1 using this first principles implementation. We first motivate G1 with a very brief history of some relevant garbage collectors, which starts 60 years ago. In 1960, John McCarthy proposed the first automated garbage collector, the Max Sweep collector, in his CMU 1960 CACM paper, which also described the LISP. McCarthy describes the Max Sweep GC algorithm in less than a page. As the program runs, it allocates objects into the heap. Once the heap is full, the program is paused for collect garbage. Every object within the heap has a marking bit, indicating its liveness status. The collection starts by marking all the heap objects reachable from the program routes, such as stacks and registers. Then the algorithm performs a transitive closure to mark all the objects that are reachable from the routes. Once marking is complete, all root reachable objects are considered as live. Any object that is unmarked is unreachable. This, their space is reclaimed by adding it to free lists of free memory. The program is then resumed and subsequent allocations are serviced by searching free lists for suitably sized memory. This was the first fully automatic garbage collector and is still used today. However, because the collector never moves objects, it is subject to memory fragmentation and bad locality. In 1969, Finichel and Utrecht solved this heap fragmentation problem of MaxWeb GC by introducing the first copying GC algorithm, the semispace collector. Finichel and Utrecht highlighted the, the locality problem of MaxWeb GC and used it to motivate their collector. The semispace GC divides the heap into two equal sized spaces, the two space and the from space. The program linearly allocates objects within the two space. After two space is filled, the program is paused for collection. The two space and the from space are swapped. Then the collector performs a transitive closure, starting from the roots and recursively copies all the reachable from space object to the two space. Finally, the program is resumed and the continuous allocation within the new two space. So this algorithm has an excellent locality and trivial allocation process. It just bumps a pointer. It is a strictly evacuating collector, meaning that only it only reclaims space by evacuating live objects into another region. This approach leads to a hundred percent space overhead. To avoid such high space overhead, GC designers started to split the heap into more regions. In 1985, Lang and Dupont proposed such algorithm. 
It combines the features from both MarkSweep and Semispace GC. The RGC manages the heap as a set of equal-sized regions. One of these regions is always reserved by the collector. Initially, the program linearly allocates objects within the regions and triggers a GC when the regions are exhausted. The collector then selects a region for evacuation. Then, the collector performs a full heap trace starting from the roots. The trace marks all the live objects in the heap. When a live object is discovered in the selected region, it is evacuated into the reserved region. Otherwise, it is marked in place. Then, the selected region is reclaimed. For the other regions, unreachable memory is placed on free lists just like MarkSweep GC. When the program resumes, it continues allocation either by linearly allocating to new regions or using free lists. The collector combines the features of both semispace and mark sweep. It avoids the 100% space overhead of semispace and systematically removes the fragmentation problem of mark sweep GC. However, this collector is still a fully stopped world collector. Although the authors discussed concurrent variants in their paper, they don't appear to have implemented them. In 1992, Hansen and Moss proposed another region-based collector, the Major Object Space GC. Here we call it Moss. It is also known as the train algorithm. Like Lang and Dupont, it starts with unfixed sized regions and triggers a GC when the space is exhausted. Then, a targeted region is selected for collection. Unlike Lang and Dupont, the scope of the collection is limited to this region. First, the collector evacuates root objects in the selected region. During program execution, each region maintains a remembered set, which records the locations of all pointers into the respective region. At collection time, the collector scans these the select region's remember set to evacuate these externally referenced objects. Then it completes the transitive closure to evacuate all the remaining reachable objects in the selected region. After that, the selected region can be reclaimed, and the program continues execution and allocation. However, most must make the conservative assumption that objects referenced from the remembered sets are live. Unless special precautions are taken, this conservative assumption will prevent cross-region cyclic garbage from being collected. Most has some special rules that are carefully designed to avoid such problem. So, most has excellent locality and trivial allocation process. By using remembered sets, most can independently collect any region without performing a full heap trace. MOS is also a stop-the-world collector and is strictly evacuating. But MOS completeness is non-trivial, because MOS has no full heap trace, so it must introduce some complex rules to avoid the problem of cross-region cyclic garbage. However, G1 uses a full heap trace to avoid such problem. So from the glimpse at some historical collectors, we see that first, now moving garbage collectors suffer heap fragmentation. Second, Lang and Dupont and most GC successfully avoid the heap fragmentation problem without causing significant space overhead. Specifically, Lang and Dupont GC makes the features of semispace and mark sweep, while most performs incremental copying. As garbage collected languages become much more widely used, the demands placed on collectors grew and the challenges for GC designers changed. Applications were being run on much larger heaps and much larger platforms, while performance being increasingly important, including throughput and responsiveness. To face these challenges, new collectors were designed. Among them were the strictly evacuating region-based collectors, like G1, Shenandoah, C4, and ZGC. Before moving to the G1 collector, we describe two of the collectors mentioned in our paper which help us understand G1 and the related collectors. We start with the SIM collector, 
a very simple region-based strictly evacuating collector, which takes design elements from Langan DuPont and Moss GC. Like Moss and Langan DuPont, the program using SIM linearly allocates objects within the regions and triggers a GC when the heap is exhausted. Unlike the other collectors, SIM first conducts a full heap trace for the purpose of identifying the amount of live data in each region. This approach was introduced by G1 and is a key to the garbage-first element of the G1 algorithm. The first trace allows the collector to optimally identify the set of regions to collect. It can then select the most profitable set of regions for evacuation, knowing the amount of live data and the space available for copying. Then the collector performs another full heap trace to evacuate live objects in these selected regions. Because it performs a full heap trace, even when evacuating just some of the heap, SIM does not need to using remember sets, and nor does it suffer from the problem of sickly garbage suffered by moss. Once evacuation is finished, the selected regions are freed. The freed regions can then be used for further allocation after the program resumes running. Like semi-space GC, the SIM collector has the advantage of excellent locality and trivial allocation. However, SIM has two stop the world full heap traces, one for identifying evacuation targets and a second for performing evacuation. Like semi-space and MOS, SIM is a strictly evacuating collector. From this comparison table, we can see both Langan DuPont and SIM GC use single-level, fixed size, and the region-based heap structure. Both of them use stop the world for heap trace for marking and evacuation. The principal difference is that SIM is a strictly evacuating collector. CIE is another of the simple collectors we synthesize. It extends SIM by adding concurrency to the first trace. The allocation process is the same as the SIM collector. Prior to each GC, before memory is ex exhausted, G1 performs a concurrent full heap trace to mark live objects and identify profitable targets for evacuation, following G1's garbage-first approach. Once the first trace is complete, the algorithm continues the same as SIM. It first selects the regions with most garbage, then, it performs a stop-the-world evacuating trace starting from the roots. It then recursively evacuates all the live objects in the selected regions. Finally, the selected regions are freed, and then the program is resumed. This collector is designed to reflect the algorithm elements common to G1, Shenador, C4, and ZGC. Unlike SIMGC, the CIE collector performs the first of the two full heap trace concurrently. This greatly reduces the GC pause time. However, it still performs a stop the world full heap trace for evacuation, which is relatively expensive, especially for large heaps. Each of G1, Shenador, C4, and ZGC introduces different technologies to av avoid this drawback. From this table, we can see CRE is just a collector that adds concurrent marking to the same GC. In 2004, Deslev's Flood, Hela, and Princess introduced the garbage-first GC algorithm, and uh, it has since become one of the most widely used algorithms in the Java world and the default collector for the hot hotspot virtual machine. The key difference between G1 and the CRE collector is that G1 uses remember sets to avoid always performing a full heap trace when evacuating. Like CRE, SIM and MOS, objects are sequentially allocated within the regions. While the program is running, the collector concurrently marks objects within the heap, just as CRE did, and selects the pro most profitable regions to collect. Then the region is stopped and the collector starts to, to evacuate objects. First, the collector selects the regions to be evacuated. Then the collector evacuates all the root reachable objects and moves them to the available region. 
Unlike CRE, G1 can omit these traits at certain collections and behave generationally, just selecting the most recently allocated regions rather than those with most garbage. Unlike CRE, each G1 region has a remember set to record external pointers. The collector evacuates all the externally referenced objects in the selected regions by scanning these remembered sets. We skip over interesting details of the design of G1's remembered set, which are discussed and evaluated in our paper. With the root and remember set objects are evacuated, the collector completes the transitive closure to evacuate all the remaining live objects in the selected regions. By the end of the GC cycle, all live objects in the selected regions will have been evacuated. The selected regions can then be freed, and the program is resumed for execution. Like CIE, G1 performs a concurrent trace, has high locality and trivial allocation process. G1 still performs stop the world evacuation, but unlike CIE and SIM, G1 avoids a full heap trace for evacuation. It does this using remembered sets, which also allows it to be optionally generational. In addition to CRE, G1 uses remembered set based evacuation instead of full heap trace. G1 has an optional generational collection setting, which we discussed in the paper. If we further expand this comparison table, we see how Shenandoah C4 ZGC relates to G1 and the other collectors. They are used fixed size regions, or depend on a full heap trace for completeness, and uh, are all strictly evacuating. This also allows us to crisply identify the differences between the algorithms, which principally relate to how they implement concurrent tracing and concurrent evacuation, and whether they support generational collection. These differences have significant impacts on the performance and scalability of the algorithms, notwithstanding the common framework on which they are built. We now discuss our analysis of the G1 collector family. We just provide an overview of in this talk. Please refer to our paper for more details. The implementation of our framework, including SIM, CRE, and the other collectors described in the paper are done using MNTK and JAXRVM. This provides us with a modular performance GC framework for such study, and currently other GC frameworks are not amenable for such studies. Although JAXRVM is a research purpose JVM, it is relatively performant. Bond recently showed performance to within 15% of OpenJDK. All of our experiments are run on machines with identical software configurations. We run our experiments on a Scalic processor. To assess microarchitecture sensitivity, we also run our barrier experiments on a Sandy Bridge processor. We use 19 benchmarks from the decouple and spec JVM98 suites, as well as the PJBB2005 benchmark. Here, we briefly discuss some of our exper experiment results. First, we measured the difference between SIM and semispace. As discussed before, semispace is the simplest form of a strictly evacuating collector, so it is an ideal baseline to re reveal the real GC costs of a region collector. This graph shows the total number of collections normalized to semispace. Because of SIM's low space overhead, it performs significantly fewer collections for most benchmarks. The average GC count of SIM is just half that of semispace. This graph shows the total GC time normalized to semispace. Although SIM does significantly fewer collections, recall that it must conduct two full heap traces for every collection so the cost of each collection is considerably higher. These two effects nearly cancel out, but on average, SIM has 14% higher GC overhead than semispace, and uh, this is a result of SIMs requiring two traces for every collection. Next, we measured the mutator time, which is the program running time less the GC time. 
This mutator time is almost the same, with only 0.6% difference. This result shows that region collector can also have great mutator performance without evacuating the whole heap. And here is a graph of the total program running time normalized to semi-space. This includes GC time and mutator time. For most of the benchmarks, the total time of the two collectors has almost no difference. In average, SIM is slightly 1.5% faster than semi-space. This, as well as the previous three graphs, shows the underlying cost of region-based collectors. We also measured G1's remember set footprint for region sizes ranging from 64 kilobytes to 8 megabytes. The footprint grows quickly as the region size shrinks. For the small region size, the footprint is so large that some benchmarks like PGBB cannot even run successfully. But as the region size becomes large, the footprint becomes very small. For 8 megabyte regions, the average footprint is only 2%. This graph shows the mutator overhead of different possible barrier implementations, normalized to variant without any barrier. The original design of G1 uses an unconditional SATB barrier and a RAM-set barrier. Here we also measured the alternative variants, the conditional SATB barrier and unfiltered RAM-set barrier. You can refer to our paper for the detailed implementation of these barriers. In addition, we also measured G1's total barrier overhead by putting G1's two barriers together. First, we show that G1 has a 12% total barrier overhead. When measured independently, unconditional SATB barrier has an overhead of 5% and the RAMSET barrier has an overhead of 8%. As an alternative, the conditional SATB barrier has an overhead of 3% and uh, the unfiltered RAM set barrier shows an overhead of 10%. This gives us some insights of the G1's barrier design. As an example, G1 may get better mutator performance by replacing the unconditional SATB barrier with the conditional SATB barrier. The platform and the methodology choice of our G1 study leads to some threats to validity. First, our reconstruction of GUI is built upon MNTK and JAX-RVM. The major drawback of using JAX-RVM are that it only supports 32-bit machines with up to 2 GB of heap size and only supports up to Java version 1.6. Also, any reconstruction of a nearly two-decade major production GC may not reflect every optimization in the algorithm. In conclusion, we explore the garbage-first algorithm, deconstructing it by considering the algorithm that came before it and by synthesizing simple algorithms that allow the algorithm elements of G1 to be systematically separated, studied, evaluated, and understood. This also illuminates the common grounds and differences between G1 and the other contemporary collectors. We create our first principles implementation of G1 and each of the incremental algorithms that allow us to evaluate its key algorithm features and provide detailed evaluations of each of them. Finally, we measure each algorithm component's contribution to the GC post time reduction. We hope the insights from our G1 study will benefit those using such collectors and those designing the next generation of GC algorithms by providing a clearer understanding of the underlying algorithms and the trade-offs they embody. Thank you.